So we'll go, we'll go uh, Naheen Himes here. And when we were going through the mock it up before you fuck it up rookie draft, uh, Casey really broke down some, some, uh, some good angles on Naheen Himes and how he could help you this year as a rookie running back. Um, I really wasn't drinking the Kool-Aid, um, but it hasn't taken very long at all for that. I mean, week one, he had seven catches, so it's really not been hard to figure out. At that point, maybe Marlon Mack wasn't hurt yet, but there's I got no excuses. Certainly, I don't think he finished the game I, week one. I got no excuses that uh, I, I was not going to be in this position to brag about my take on Naheen Hines in case he is. So you take the floor first with Mr. Hines. Well, I mean – Basically, I don't know if, if you missed it and the mock it up before you fuck it up or you're maybe newer to the program. It's something we do every year. Um, that's kind of right after the NFL draft. We do a lot of scouting before that draft, and then we kind of use one of our home leagues and break it into uh, more of a usable tool than just saying like oh we're doing a mock draft and there isn't a team already formed right. on this said dra- so like you're not necessarily drafting for need you're basically just ranking yes. those players at that point and, and it's, uh, you know you're kind of doing that through this through our mock it up before you fuck it up because it gets to a point where you're just you know you're ranking the guy you're taking the best available for the most part sure maybe, maybe there's a top end receiver that you're swapping out for one of the lower end running backs or whatever um, but we got into the second round, and Naheen Hines, somebody really needed an RB2, and I, I thought that this was... Not far into the second round. No. It might have been like 2-3 two, 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 or 2-2, two, 2-3, two, 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 three, two, three, two four. Think, Yeah, 2-2 two, two or 2-3. Two, um, and he just didn't have any running backs, really. And he had one, I think he had Melvin Gordon. Okay. and I'm very impressed that you remember that. Um, I was just stating that you know with this draft pick is Naheen Hines the best pick and this was before like obviously by the end of summer Naheen Hines was being drafted he was hot much higher than when we were kind of talking about him yeah he was hot um, but I just thought and kind of saw what what I thought was going to happen here and I mean yeah he, he scored good points in these last two weeks but a 7-5 and a 9-3 isn't the best and the 12 in, in week one um you know, wasn't anything to brag about. So who knows really what's going to happen again? We're gambling, but um, I just, with this Frank Reich offense and what he was doing and the way that the Eagles played it last year, I saw a lot of upside opportunity for a guy like Naheen Hines, who is a converted receiver and can play that slot position. They didn't have a lot of receivers to start with, and they've been losing them like crazy. Kane's already out. T.Y. is now missing some time. Sure. They're missing Jack Doyle, who's, you know, a, Say Safety what you blanket. want, but pass catcher. He can catch. And, I mean, they really haven't had any other running backs. Not that Naheem Hines is crushing it in the attempt category. This was the most attempts he's had all season this last game with 15. But before that, it was 4-5, four, 4-5. Five, four, five. Yeah. Um, so I just thought that the upside with this guy was huge from a pass catching perspective. And, you know, I knew Andrew Luck was hurt. And I knew this kind of was going to be sort of a shorter passing game offense, keep get the ball out of his hands. But I knew this was kind of – at least what you saw as the offensive coordinator as the Eagles with this uh, committee approach and quick passes, and Naheen Hines fit into that profile well, and he can play in, in and out of the slot. So I thought this was you know, a, a really solid pick if you needed an RB2 near the top end of a draft, and he could really help you out. And he's been helping you out. Sure. You know, obviously, the 7 and the 9 isn't great, but it's not the end of the world. And that, you know, who knows what will happen when Mac comes back. Uh, is, is kind of my concern, and he's just had a good game, and a lot of people are really high in, on Naheen Hines, and much like we talked about uh, James White being hot right now and people you know, really latching on to seeing all these last two games, he's had 28 and 16 points, like, and he was kind of a buzzword near the end of the season. It's all starting to kind of come together, and maybe I would consider selling Naheen Hines if, if – I could make an upgrade. I'm not, again, we've talked about this multiple times. There's no point in making a trade that is anywhere near lateral uh, yeah. for you. But Naheen Hines, like you might have paid a high end second for him. Maybe you even paid a first for him. So it might not even be worth for getting your first round pick back if you paid the first for him already. Well, um, there was. Sorry, but who knows? I, I no, it's all good. I. So I, I don't know. I'm kind of interested in selling a little bit i think kane could come back i think hilton stays in there i think there's a glaring need for receivers on this team and they kind of see it now like it's this guy's first frank wright's first go around at being a head coach they have two tight ends that are good ebron's 
been nothing but great this year. So yeah. I can't take anything away from him. And Doyle hasn't been out there. So, and Mac could come back and they could easily draft a bell cow after seeing how this kind of, it's what it was all great when you were on Philadelphia and everything's going well. And you got a bunch of backs who can mix in there and do all sorts of things. So it's a completely different story when a, you don't have an offensive line like you did. Cause you, you do have, you made an effort at yeah. least this year, you drafted a guard really high and you've made an effort over the past years to get better. You've had some bad luck with injuries. Um, and you don't have Philly's defense either, right? You don't have Philly's defense either. And so I could see maybe Naheen Hines just possibly staying in a sort of James white purgatory of being that kind of, there'll be some up games and there'll be some down games. You might need him to fill in as your RB two. This is my oh shit emergency RB two. And maybe not hanging on to the va- He's a very good receiver. Um, yeah. Well, he's not a great running back and that was never my interest for him. Yeah. Uh, but you know, so I'm, I'm, I don't exactly know what you could get for Naheen Hines right now. And I, I don't think anybody would necessarily even really give you a first, but like we talked about James White, I think you might be able to possibly pair him up with something and make a make a jump up in player caliber for a player who might be maybe a little safer than this guy week in, week out. I like Hines a good bit, but it's eat Mac. We haven't even seen him really with Mac in the fold staying in there for a whole game. And I think Mac's somebody who's can catch the ball and as an electric player. And there, you know, there's been rumors of a Le'Veon Bell type that He's on Le'Veon Bell was on the short list of or the Colts were on the short list of Le'Veon Bell right. type suitors. And I don't know if there's any fire to that, but yeah, you know, I think it doesn't take much for it to really, it doesn't take much to change anybody's outlook, but he's not safe is I guess okay. in his out in his outlook for longevity. He's not necessarily safe. A lot, a lot could easily happen to turn the tide. Whereas maybe some other guys who are a little bit more established, it takes more to get them out, out the door and decrease their roles. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm super, I, I could tell when we were talking about the things we were going to talk about tonight earlier in the week. Um, I could tell we were going to be a little bit different on this and that's why I was excited because you were early in on the Heen Hines and you really nailed this potential pro well, you, you basically crystal balled some things like you sometimes do. And this has worked out exactly up to completely home run about what might happen has happened. And it's, he's been awesome. Um, so I guess a couple of that, you, you, you know, a couple of different ways to look at it. Obviously you haven't seen Marlon Mack. He saw him for a couple of plays in the preseason. He definitely looked explosive on the edge. He caught a pass and looked really hot. Mm-hmm. So Marlon, Marlon Mack, he's, he's got some fire in his legs for sure. And if, if that hamstring or quad or whatever he hurt gets, gets right, he could be a threat. Um, but I, for me right now, like in through five games, the Colts offense, like it, it is a quick release system. It is a, you know, quick pass offense anyway. And then I think in addition to that, Andrew Luck and his shoulder injury and everything else that they've just really dialed this completion percentage in. He's, you know, he's already got 245 attempts. I know they played some, some overtime already and all that fun stuff, but they got he's got 245 attempts and three, so five games. So if even if you just multiply that out to 15 games times five, that's over. That's 750 passes, right? Yeah. So that's an absolute ridiculous amount. I think S- Stafford's got the record with high 700s, maybe. Yeah. Well, anything over 600 is crazy. Yeah. You know. Um. So 750 attempts. That's without. That's only on a 15 quick math in my head. I mean, so call it 770. I don't know. That's a ton. But he's you know you got. To, obviously, T.Y. Hilton is hurt and didn't play last week, but he already had 38 targets through four games, so that's 10 targets a game for him. Ebron's got 45 targets in five games, so that's nine targets a game. Ryan Grant, Chester Rogers, has both got 32. That's a t- I mean that you know they're on pace for 100 targets apiece. That and and I did, and so there's Naheen Hines. So the part about Naheen Hines for me is he's he's got 30 catches already in five games. He's on pace for 90 catches. Right. And that's which the is magic a, number that's been floating around. That's what's there been going all. around. So that's some people and like some people towards for the late rookie drafts. It there was some late into the first round draft pick that w- Naheen that, Hines. That would be the record for. 
Stafford had 727 attempts. That's okay. number one overall. So basically, they, Andrew Luck is kind of on pace to shatter the record by fit by a whole game of, of big games worth of stats. Right, and I think that's probably true for more quarterbacks than not this year. I agree with that. No, I completely agree with that. But maybe, maybe not. Even, I mean, there I mean, is so many games. That you, there's 50 attempts in almost every game. I know. I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, I, I would imagine that Ben Roethlisberger's attempts look close to this as well, you know, but so, but this is doesn't Luck, matter. Luck and his receivers. It, right. Nothing's, there's nothing to change this anytime soon. Mm-hmm. And so when you were talking about, you know, obviously um, the wide receiver, Deion Kane blows his knee out in preseason. He's gone. Like, you know, the offensive line is not going to fix itself in, in any times. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously you got two offensive tackles that might come back in a couple of weeks, but it's still not, a, it's been a bad offensive line. They took a, the best offensive got guard and, you know, one, three or one, four or something. They took him in top. They they're trying, like you said, but that's not a quick fix. And the defense isn't, you know, they played over their heads the first couple of weeks. They definitely overachieved for a defense that we've seen to be, just be horrible for years now. Right. So, it's not like, like you said, they, they don't have the offensive line that Philadelphia has for this system. They don't have the defensive line that Philadelphia has to get them to ball back or take the, you know, to make it a close, to get them to lead, hold the lead. Like, it's just going to be shootout city. And you saw that against the Patriots last week. Most other teams in that position turn into the Dolphins from week four and they just get hammered. But Andrew Lux, just right. Andrew, he's got a heart of a lion for as horrible as that sounds to have to say. He really does. He's not going down without a fight. So... What I'm trying to say is Naheem Hines being on pace for 90 catches, not 90 targets, but 90 catches. I feel like you'd be do- – yes, Marlon Mack is coming back, and with that does throw a big question mark into plans, and Jack Doyle's out, so that too. But I feel like maybe if you could get a first plus or something mean, – maybe, you know – if you get that first round pick from a team who's 0 and 5 or something fun like that, where mm-hmm. you're like, I guarantee that I'm guaranteed that this pick is going to be early. Right. They, they might not stay. It might not be the first pick. It might not be the second pick, but it's going to be really, really up there. Then I can see getting onto that. But I really like the idea of holding Naheen Hines until this, uh, this catch number continues to grow. I mean, just. Uh, maybe you don't gamble into next year and they draft a workhorse back, but I just don't, I don't know that that's, there's not a lot of big top end running backs. There's not a, a Darius Geis and there's not a Saquon Barkley uh, this buzzing the college landscape right now. So there's not necessarily somebody who's just going to blow the doors off the running back list. I mean, obviously everybody pop there's, there's guys out there. And, mm-hmm. and when you go to the, you know, by the time you get into the college football season, there'll be 20 guys that we love. And by the time the, the, uh, um, combine rolls around. There'll be some 10 guys that we're absolutely in love with. And we got a complete fun first round for draft picks. Right. I get it. But I think if you hang, hang on to Naheen Himes right now, if you hang on to him for a little bit longer, I felt like when you brought up the James White thing, you were going to go to the, he almost has to continue to go up in stock price. Yes. Marlon Mack is a question mark and that could, but I mean, Marlon Mack's not like a, he's not a workhorse type back anyway. I guess he could be potentially right. fall in, but I think Nah Naheen Hans has made a big enough name. He's not he he you well, saw him come in and take Wilkins' spot. He got fifteen carries last week. Well the thing is is that it's it's not it's not about the the necess- I mean he did get fifteen carries, it was for forty five yards, so nothing great there. He's he's not a good running back. He's a good pass catcher. Sure. And I mean there there is in lies the difference between what James White not that James White's not a good pass catcher, but he's they great. have I have an offense like yes the thing with with that that could lead to Naheen Hines staying m- closer to the same of what he's doing right now is the fact that they don't have any other real great receivers like Ch- he's Chester Rogers and Ryan Grant are basically Naheen Hines like, right no yeah exactly you know, about the same size right and I and thought it are just... kind of slot players but both are right. kind of slot players and Yes. You know, so I, I can understand. I, I can I get that, and I'm not necessarily saying that. I, I just I don't know. I don't know if I want nine. If he gets ninety catches, sure. I, yeah, I think there's there could be some good value for I th- I, heading he, into next season. That, I just I don't I don't I don't just I don't want the long term outlook for Naheen Hines. Well, honestly, at this of point, being a good as good a producer as maybe people are seeing him as right now. Right. Well, honestly, at this point, I thought that Ryan Grant would have been a little bit more uh, take charge ish 
And, and, and for the wide receivers, not that he's been bad, but he's been basically like a five for 50 every week kind of receiver. Mm-hmm. And Chester Rogers for his eight targets that he's gotten three weeks in a row. Uh, if you saw, you know, the Thursday night game is the only game on, so you're watching that closer than any, you know, than in most games on Sundays. The, the dude dropped a bomb touchdown that was, he was running, he's behind the defense and he's full speed and the ball hits him and he drops it. I mean, that happens. Right. To perfect, Marvin Jones has done that this year. Did Deshaun sure. Jackson do, will do that to you? I bet, you know, everybody will drop a ball. But then, then after that, you're already on drop alert from Naheen Hines. And mm-hmm. then after that, you're in the end zone and a surefire touchdown is up in the air for Naheen Hines and he jumps up for it and it just looks like Will Ferrell in that movie. Like, I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> and he just didn't know how to do... Chester you, Rogers. Chester, yes. Right. Chester Rogers looked like Will Ferrell. Like, I don't know what to do with my hands right now. The ball's coming. I'm in the end zone. I should be catching it. And I don't know how to do it. Yeah. And I just lost a ton of confidence in him from that. And I'm not saying I'm going to use that as a reason to boost up Naheen Hines value but like I like that comparison is just like Ryan Grant Naheen Hines and Chester Rogers are basically the same player they got the same amount of targets Naheen Hines maybe gets a little bit lower average depth of target running out of the backfield and in the slot too he's got 29 out of 35 these other guys both mirror image Ryan Grant and Chester Rogers are running 24 out of 32 which isn't a terrible completion right. rate but I guess there's no wide receiver savior coming. Obviously, Hilton was crushing, but Naheen Hines has got three games this year with nine targets already or more, and two of them, uh, one of them was with the, um, before Hilton got hurt, and I guess his last two, Hilton got hurt against the Texans and didn't play against the Patriots, so I can see the bump up in targets there. I just feel like if you hang on to the guy and let him put in some more catches, yeah. that you're just going to continue to have this value go up. Yeah, I, 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 I can understand it a little bit more than the than the James White aspect of maybe holding for a little while longer, just because there is uh, more opportunity. Possibly, obviously, it's not as good of an offense, but hey, Andrew Luck is is absolutely no slouch. Like well, you it's said, just like a volume offense right. at this point. Like I said, there's no defense to stop anybody on the other side, really. I mean, they've, they've played better than they should have, but it's, it's just a vol- the dudes on pace for 750 right. so targets. I, so I think, you know, obviously touchdowns are going to be fluky through the rest of this, and if Marlon Mack comes back and J- Jack Doyle comes back and T.Y. Hilton all get healthy and they all come back out there. I see that. I think the, t- the, flu- the touchdowns are going to be fluky, uh, but when you look at th- it's the running back stuff isn't really going to help you out really ever. Like the yardage is negligible except for this last game with 45. And if Marlins max in there, there's no way this guy's getting 15 carries. Um, so that, that four, that 4.5 right there that you got, I mean, that adds into your 16 and he, you know, he had seven for 45. So that's, I think seven for 45 and maybe 20 or 30 yards rushing is, is probably about what you're the, the seven for 45 is probably the high end of catches for him moving forward. And the 40 yards rushing is probably the high end of him moving forward to me. That's kind of what I'm getting at here. Like those two touchdowns in this 28 point game makes the stat line look great. Obviously the 11 targets is awesome. Um, but if you're just catching a couple, five or six balls for 45 yards, I mean, again, it's basically Chester Rogers. Yeah. Well, I can and see. And I, I don't know. The rushing, I don't think, is going to be there, and the touchdowns will be up and down. So I just think that he'll just be kind of floating through a lot of these 16s and then go back to seven fives, and then it'll be a 16, and maybe you get a two-touchdown game thrown in there. So I just... Right now, his name's kind of hot. It, it would be the reason that I would be interested in possibly moving on. Not... And again... Uh, to again go off the James White thing of saying how it's a little different you did spend probably you got more invested in Naheen Hines so it is harder to jump up that tier because you already either spent a high second or maybe a low end first on him so it is hard to be like oh well I can cash in on this right now like James White you didn't spend anything for him right in a startup draft or I mean I don't even if you I don't don't know where he got drafted in a rookie draft four years ago but oh, well yeah, if that, he did at all you know no they yeah exactly he probably didn't he, it was late and so it is harder to get the value for Hines right now than well, it would be for James White James White is 26 years old and he's got five years of being RB2 barely in your lineup James White Naheen Hines is a 21 year old rookie who has this like you said there's a lot more excitement around him right now but those but that you know the week against the texans like you said he had the nine catches for 62 and two touchdowns that's a very similar week than that 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 uh james white was having in week four when he put up 30 touched at 30 points for ppr points but neheen hines had that randy moss-esque 
touchdown oh, catch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like you said, I mean, he's good receiver. Now, I think there's there's no doubt in my mind right now that if you had Naheen Hines and, and James White on the same team, you trade Naheen Hines, get more for him. I mean, just he's maybe twenty one year old rookie. Somebody might love the, you know, who knows? He's just a patriot guy, yeah. maybe. Yeah, but I, I just, I just feel like Naheen Hines is is. I just felt like he was hot this year, hot right now. Then there's that ninety catch total floating around. I think. And I was maybe a little concerned about what the long term outlook. Well, I like the guy. I think he's a good receiver, and he there is there's wow catches already in his on his repertoire or his resume. Sure, uh, moving forward, and I could be completely wrong with this. He could be he, maybe he ends up being their slot receiver and slash, you know, sl- scat back. Here sure. There, well, but. Hilton's been hurt in the past, and yeah. he's hurt already. And you know, like I. Ch- I Chester Rogers and Ryan Grant just hadn't been. I mean, they've they've been target monsters. They haven't been like hot quality monsters. Right. They've kind of they've been quantity, what they what they should quality. be. But they need a, they need better players. They need better skill position players. And I think they're now that you're in your first year as being a head coach, you could kind of acknowledge that maybe a little bit. But the team has a lot of needs, so who knows? And they should be spending money in free agency coming up here. Agreed.